You are listening to ChartingWealth.com for Friday the 2nd of March 2018. We like to say we told you. You see that the S&P 500 was down strong 1.45% on that short we talked about. The Qs, the NASDAQ 100 down also. TLT up about half a percent and gold down about a quarter of a percent. Let's jump into these charts and see what we see. That green candle that started out for the week has now turned red and is a spinning top, meaning, of course, uncertainty tending down. Derivative oscillator gaining downward momentum is on the weekly chart. The price percent oscillator heading down strongly as we tune in a little deeper. We see a red candle forming on that two-day chart. Now, remember, we had the chart end on up on Tuesday the 27th, and of course this latest two-day candle is down, and it is a red spinning top. It does have a bit of a wick on top, and does have a wick on the bottom again. We see the price percent oscillator headed down. Derivative oscillator still losing downward momentum, but that's because of all the price swing up over the last many days, and where we really see things happening, this is what we told you to look for. What do you see happening? Told you it might be coming, and sure enough, in the morning, we had a crossover on that four-hour chart for a jumping in point around 2 o'clock. Hope you looked and jumped either then. Maybe you tried to jump in a little early, and you jumped in in the morning. Whichever, it is beautiful so far. We have seen things topping out and heading over. We'll see. Now, the last time we had a little bit of down move, we had about five candles. We've already had five and again, strong down movement. We've gone down and touched the 200 moving average line. Now, continue to watch that line. The reason is that those moving average lines, particularly the standard moving average, not the exponential, they can actually be levels of support, particularly that 200 period. So keep your eye on that. We'll see if it blows through that and keeps going down. We talked about how Really, the struts holding the market up have been kicked out after we had that big down move on the week ending the 9th of February. Things tried to recover, but so far, moving down strongly. Now, as we get into the queues, it was down even more, 1.63%, and we see that we still have a green up candle for the week. Now, don't forget the queues on the two-day chart, even though the weekly's down, the two-day chart had crossed over going up. It has closed now with this latest down movement, flipping right back over going down. Keep an eye on things in the morning. We're going to go ahead and note that that has occurred. Some of you want to know, of course, if you have the two-day and the four-hour chart rotate over in the same position as the weekly, can that be a jumping in point? The short answer is Yes, and it's something you need to practice. In fact, we saw in the morning, strong down movement continuing in the afternoon on the four-hour chart, derivative oscillator heading down, price percent oscillator really cranking over like a hockey stick, moving down. And of course, yes, you can sure play that when you have enough down movement that it pulls the two-day and the four-hour over at the same time heading down then yes, you can look to jump in and ride that. you got to be careful, though, but I want you to practice it. That's what we're all about. Remember, not a stock calling service. We're an education firm, and we want you to practice. Use our trade worksheet, daily market worksheets every day, except over the weekend, that weekly market worksheet. All those worksheets are available to you at our YouTube channel. They're available to you at chartingwealth.com, of course, and we email them out every night with our free daily market review that you can sign up for at chartingwealth.com. Now, that's where we are on the queues. Things are looking beautiful, folks, particularly on that S&P 500. We saw it coming. Queues also, with that strong down move for the day, has also given us a good down play. Now, those of you who don't understand what I'm talking about, why would you buy something that's going down? It's because you can either short it by buying a put, or, if that's a little too sophisticated for you right now, just buy the inverse fund. SH is one for the S&P 500. QID is one for the Qs, and there's another one that, that's a double. There's another one that's just a single. But let me tell you what to do. Go watch our training video 
at the website or at our YouTube channel. And when you're there, please make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It helps us with our metrics. But when you are there, look for inverse funds, inverse ETFs, how to make money when markets crash. That's the training you want on understanding how to use those inverse funds. That's how you make money when the market goes down. Of course, you just buy the cues when the market's going up. If you're looking to get into the NASDAQ 100, now let's move on to the next chart. We're looking on the weekly chart at TLT. Only thing up for the day, bonds up 0.48%. Now, you typically would expect bonds to go up if the market's going down because it's typically a safe haven where people run to when the market goes down. What do we see happening, the stock market, that is? We see on the weekly chart a green spinning top. That means lots of indecision. It's all, really almost a doji. It means lots of indecision. It is a doji. Tending up. We see that the price percent oscillator is still headed down. Derivative oscillator is losing downward momentum. So we look at the two-day chart. We see that it is getting very close. We can't confirm a crossover yet, but the derivative oscillator is flipped over. Price percent oscillator seems pretty close. This third day of up movement, I'm sorry, the third candle of up movement, that's of course with the two-day chart, six days pushed through, it broke through a few days ago through the two-day trend line. It's now blown through the weekly trend line. And as we look at the four-hour chart, we see that, of course, it has been going up since the morning of the 23rd of February. Went up for a few, uh, for a day and a half, then down for a day and a half, then up for a day down a little bit in the morning and popping up strong in the afternoon. That's where TLT is. And remember, we don't have a trade there right now in TLT. Why is that? Well, it's because we are now pushing through our trend lines. We've already done that. And, and I mean, again, the weekly chart hasn't flipped over yet. The two-day chart hasn't. Two-day chart's getting awfully close with that kind of backup you need to be really, really careful. Now, of course, if that doesn't happen and bonds roll over and sink tomorrow, well, if you have a crossover going down of that four-hour chart, you could sure consider jumping in on a down move. It's been very good to us so far. Let's go to the gold, the last chart for the day. Gold, of course, is in a confirmed up move on the weekly chart, but that's getting really, really weak. It's been blown through on the weekly chart this week. We will see if we end the week with a weekly vertical crossover going down. Don't know if it'll have that much strength to pull it down, but it is a strong down week after gold really slid sideways, tending down for the last several weeks. Since it peaked, we had a great three-week run-up after our weekly vertical crossover going up, and of course, plenty of time to pull out of that and do quite well after those three weeks of run-up in gold. And of course, now it does appear to be heading down. Hasn't crossed yet on the weekly. On the two-day, of course, it did cross over going down all the way back on the 7th of February. Went down for a while, up for a while, and then eight days of strong down movement so far in gold. As we look at the four-hour chart, what's it doing for us? Well, for our chart, when we go back and take a look at it, of course, gold crossed over on the four-hour chart going down back on the 21st of February, slid sideways for a while, and then has been dropping nicely. Hopefully, this four-hour chart's going to start working for us reliably time after time. It has this time, and actually, the four-hour chart did pretty well for us back on the 13th of February. And again, right there at the end of February, it's done nicely. So we need gold to trend for that four-hour chart to be a total trading chart. That's where we are, folks. Thank you so much for being with us. You have questions, problems, concerns. We're happy to hear from you. Don't forget at the close of the market tomorrow, we will be putting out our weekly review and forecast, what we call the comprehensive review and forecast. Thank you so much, my friends. Please make sure to go to the channel and subscribe. You get all the bennies there, all the goodies, the daily market worksheet, weekly market worksheet, trade worksheet, all the new training when it comes out. But you got to go to chartingwealth.com and sign up for the daily market review. Also, go to Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. Let us hear from you. Write us, CW, at chartingwealth.com. God bless from the whole team here at Charting Wealth World Headquarters.